Ugh. The UNSC Infinity versus the Resurgent Star Destroyer. One of my oldest videos, and well, yeah. It's fair to say that when I made this video, I was still learning a lot, not only about YouTube, but also doing Starship Versus. So with that said, and in honor of the increasing hype for Halo Infinite, I'm going to do what you have been asking for. We'll be taking a second look at this rather iconic matchup. Oh, by the way, that little thing at the beginning there was from my old intro. Let me know down in the comments if you remember it. Now, before we get into things, today's video is happily sponsored by Vite Ramen, who actually reached out specifically because they enjoyed my Halo videos, which is nice. So, as I mentioned, Vite Ramen reached out because they like my videos, and I agreed to do a little sponsored ad if I liked their noodles, which I did. So, I'm generally trying to just be healthy because my wedding's coming up and I don't want to look like Jabba or even my dog Remy in a suit. So, I like something that I can prepare quickly and that I can prepare easily while still being pretty healthy. It's not bad in calories, it's got a lot of protein, and most importantly for me, compared to some other instant ramen, it's really low in sodium. I don't know a lot about nutrition, but I do know it was made by twins with a clinical nutrition degree, and I do know that it tastes good as well. So, Vite Ramen didn't give me any talking points, they didn't tell me what to say, they didn't even tell me how long they wanted the ad to be, they just said to be natural. With that being said, personally I think if you're looking for some healthier noodles, especially if you like ramen, then Vite Ramen might be a good option for you. A link to their website down in the description, and I'll also recommend that you check out one of their variety packs. Anyway, on to the content. One of the major issues with my first video is that I relied a little too heavily on either obscure or non-representative pieces of lore. I didn't look at things sort of holistically. And for transparency, this is something now that I'm critical of when others do. So not a good job, heck. The best example of this would be where I evaluated the shield and turbolaser strength of the resurgent and brought up some commonly used but I think inconsistent feats or sources. So let's try again. I think this battle is compelling because both of these ships are pretty cool and they represent the next generation of capital ship in their universe. They're dominant in the era in which they've emerged. So what we'll do is look at both of the ships quickly, examine the differences in the Star Wars and Halo universes, then do a full comparison. Let's take a brief look at the Resurgent first. The Resurgent was an incredibly modern and dominant capital ship. It was almost twice as long as the old Imperial Star Destroyer, at just under 3 kilometers long, and was armed with thousands of weapons. It had hyper-efficient and powerful turbolasers, a ship covering point defense system, including, as we see in The Force Awakens, missile launchers, and a variety of other weapons. Additionally, the Resurgent is better designed. The command deck and other vulnerable bits are less out in the open, and the entire ship was internally reinforced to a greater degree than the ISD while also sporting thicker armor, and this is probably because of the extra size the capital ship has to work with. Additionally, the Resurgent could carry at least 150 TIEs of various classification. Although we've never actually seen a First Order TIE bomber in service, presumably one does exist. The Resurgent was heavily augmented by never before seen First Order technology, generally improving all systems. Turbolasers in particular were also sometimes further upgraded by Kyber crystals, likely providing greater accuracy, firepower, and firing speed through some sort of Star Wars mechanism. The First Order Star Destroyer was designed specifically for capital ship combat, and like all Star Destroyers, could deliver devastating broadsides and forward-facing attacks, with of course a notable weakness at the rear. Like the majority of warships in the Star Wars universe, the battlecruiser also possessed deflector shields capable of protecting the ship against energy and projectile-based weapons. That of course is important because of the whole, you know, Mac gun thing. But now onto the UNSC Infinity. The Infinity is the greatest UNSC warship of all time and the greatest modern vessel in the Halo universe. In my opinion, it can stand up even to the gargantuan CSO-class supercarrier. The key to the Infinity Infinity's success lies in the four ultra-powerful Series 8 Max magnetic accelerator cannons, as most of you know. Essentially, they accelerate a particle to ludicrous speeds, allowing it to smash through enemy capital ships, shield and all. Based on the Infinity's piercing of the mantle approach in Halo 4, the Infinity is either very lucky or its Super Max are more powerful than those even on orbital defense platforms. Although
although that does seem very hard to believe, I think we'll have to assume the latter. The Infinity was just over 5.5 kilometers long, and aside for the four Max, was armed with over 1,000 missile launchers covering the ship's body, point defense autocannons, and other secondary weapons. The Infinity was capable of launching nuclear and conventional ordnance, making it deadly from all sides. Still, the worst place to be against the Infinity, of course, was right in front of it. The incredible features of the Infinity, especially when compared to other UNSC capital ships, comes from the integration of Forerunner and Covenant technology. Much of the advantages were in aspects not necessarily important for this video, like slip space engine accuracy and speed, but I've covered all of this before, so I'm not going to focus on it. If you do want to learn more, you can watch this video I did on the Infinity up in the right corner, or you can watch the stolen version uploaded by Halo Sophia. I mean, all he did was translate my script, and he didn't even change the video, just re-narrated it, as you can see here. What a cheeky little fella. Anyway, the Infinity's Forerunner technology provided it with shielding, as we see in the Battle of Requiem, shielding powerful enough for the Infinity to ram through a Covenant cruiser without even coming close to failing. How does that compare to Star Wars shield strength? That's not a fun discussion, but one I guess we'll have to have later. She of course also carried, alongside 150 fighters, the capacity to bring with her 10 frigates of varied design. For this matchup, I'll include the Strident, as it's easier to just take the Infinity pre refit. Like the Infinity, Stridents were shielded and built around a Mac cannon. They slid out of the supercarrier and were basically an entire fleet, providing escort duty. They were significantly less powerful, obviously, than the supercarrier, but could obviously fill a certain niche. Finally, I just want to mention that the Infinity was loaded with Spartan 4s, though we're not going to go into that aspect because I don't think boarding action will be important for this battle. So let's talk Star Wars vs Halo, and I guess generally what we do when we compare two universes. Now, my goal is always to tie the ships down to their specific universes without making the two comparisons focused on the differing power between the universes. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but what I'm saying is I don't want the Infinity to win or lose because Star Wars is more or less powerful than Halo generally, and that's the problem I think with the first video, and why a lot of you were left unsatisfied. So I think generally, whether Halo shields or Star Wars shields are more powerful is somewhat important, but when I watch the movies and games, it seems pretty close, and I want to move away when doing versus episodes, to hunting down specifics, doing calcs based on exploding asteroids, and pulling Frank frankly BS numbers from reference books, especially when dealing with two different universes because, to be honest, I just think that's lame and not very satisfying. That being said, the fact that Halo relies not only on projectile weapons, but projectile weapons guided by artificial intelligence, and of course the Infinity does have a smart AI in Roland, means that the ship has a de facto range advantage, although some Star Wars source books have said that, you know, ships can fire five light minutes away or whatever. It's clear to me when you watch the movies that that's not the case. I don't think the Infinity is going to sit back from a gazillion miles away and snipe the vessel. However, it does have a longer effective range. Halo does a similar thing with its reference books, where the games always show combat being fairly close, but the background lore allows for much further fighting. I think we have to be reasonable, not over-exaggerate, and just give the range advantage to the UNSC. The Infinity, I think, also needs to get the power advantage when talking about about the main weapon. The Infinity's gun seems capable of blasting through any Covenant capital ship, given the fact that it's seemingly more powerful than a Super Mac platform. Perhaps there's some underlying issue with power generation in Star Wars that makes Star Destroyer shields more powerful than those of a Covenant carrier. However, we've seen Star Destroyers die to asteroids, we've seen them die from hyperspace collisions, and of course we've seen them die from conventional exchanges of fire. So the Infinity's main weapon is comparable more powerful because it's a big boomstick that can one-shot basically an enemy capital ship, and as we know, even managed to punch a temporary hole in a Forerunner warship. The Resurgent has a lot of weapons, it has great firing arcs, but it doesn't have anything that uniquely powerful. When it comes to shielding, I'm going to avoid making such a proclamation right now because I think it's starting to get obvious how I'm going to decide this video. So we're getting to the end now, and I think the answer of who would win really the this whole time has been obvious. The UNSC Infinity is basically the UNSC hacking the game and building a cheat ship. 
They've used technology from an incredibly advanced ancient race. They've perfected a weapon which was already very effective in space combat. It can bust through capital ships and keep moving, though to be fair I guess Star Destroyers can do that too. It seems to be pretty quick, and I haven't even mentioned the fact that it carries an entire fleet with it. If you have 10 extra capital ships, even if they're only enough to harass the enemy, you can send 5 behind the Resurgent, plucking away at its shield and forcing the Resurgent to actually change its shield so it can completely cover all of its vulnerable places. However, that's only the case of an up-close battle. Here's what I think will happen. Both of these ships drop out of hyperspace or slipspace. Assuming they're not yet in range, then the Infinity has an immediate advantage, because its effective range, I think, will be much further than the Resurgence. And, and that's not only because of the nature of the weapon, but because Halo ships use AI, or at least the Infinity does, while Star Wars ships typically do much of their weapons firing by hand, with some computer assistance. The Infinity at this range can just pluck away at the Resurgent. I honestly don't know if one super max shot will be enough to destroy the ship, but with four cannons it could happen before the Resurgent is even able to get within range. And that's partially why I think fighters won't end up playing a huge role in the battle. In a situation where they're up close, I think things are pretty similar. Maybe the only exception would be if the Resurgent and the Infinity engaged on broadsides. I think that battle would be much, much closer. The Resurgent just has so many weapons that I think the broadside would be far more devastating than anything even a Covenant ship could put out, at least at close range. I mean, we know the Infinity Shields are strong, but power generation in Star Wars is also pretty insane. Then of course, if you put either the Resurgent or the Infinity behind the other vessel, then it's an easy win. That being said, this probably wasn't a fair fight. The Infinity is a super ship. It was one of two planned and only one completed. The Resurgent, on the other hand, was just a fairly ordinary capital ship for the First Order. A Super Star Destroyer, I think, would perhaps be comparable, or maybe an Eclipse Super Star Destroyer. There, I think, the Super Laser would easily outpace the Super Mac, which I don't think has shown anywhere near the destructive capability. In this matchup, though, which I know I've kind of rambled through, I do give it to the Infinity, and I say it wins 8.5 times out of 10. Perhaps the Resurgent can move into a position where its broadsides can tear away at the Infinity, but then it still has to deal with nuclear missiles and thousands of ordinary ordnance. Do you agree though? Do you disagree? Let me know what you think down in the comment section and also by voting in the upper right hand corner. Hopefully less of you dislike this video and even if you don't agree with the final outcome, hopefully you can appreciate the way that I talked through it. Anyway, as always guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Have a great night and may the force be with you.